Just break down the uh, the trade here. We got um, Rick Nash comes to the Bruins. Uh, the Rangers keep fifty percent of his salary. Right. Uh, so he's uh, on a three point nine million cap hit, which is pretty good for the Bruins. That way they can actually fit him under the salary right. cap. Right. Because the cap hit was right now. I mean the Bruins are pretty tight anyway. I mean they had to switch money around because I think they only had like two point three million left. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, was going to be a tight fit either way. Um, but then uh, the Bruins send over a uh, twenty eighteen first round pick. Uh, Ryan Spooner, who's been playing second line wing, uh, Ryan Lindgren, a defenseman from Minnesota. Uh, they've got uh, Matt Bolesky, who was a 2015 free agent uh, signing bust. Uh, he really struggled. He's in the minor leagues. He's been kind of uh, wasting away there. And then uh, a 2019 seventh round pick. So that's the return right there. Uh, overall, the first thing you think of is Really, aside from the first round pick, the right. Bruins didn't give up that much. Right. Oh, I think everyone now, if you look at the way, I mean, the Bruins have had so many younger guys really kind of step up. I think Bruins fans are kind of nervous of what they were going to have to give up in any trade. And I mean, you look at last night, Bob McKenzie from PSN was throwing out names like Jacob Bozbaka Carlson, uh, Trent Frederick, guys who are, you know, impact forward. JFK is with Providence right now. Trent Frederick's with Wisconsin. But two guys you could, you know, see in a couple of years being reliable everyday guys on the roster and so that kind of scares some people not even to mention you know guys who are way up in the prospect pipeline like Donato or one of those guys who you really have to go quite a bit for so when you look at the return um you know look at Ryan Spooner who pretty much Rick Nash is filling in for his spot Ryan Spooner is going to be a free agent at the end of the year I doubt the Bruins are going to be able to re-sign him to a contract I mean he's on pace for you know another 50 point season for him had a good year on the second line playing out of position but you're pretty much replacing him with Rick Nash for one season, which is a pretty good trade-off. Matt Valeski, as you said, was more or less just a you know a move for cap concern. I mean, he was just down in Providence. He had no points in 14 games up with the Bruins this year, so pretty much just kind of freeing up money that way. And then Ryan Lingeren, again, like a good defenseman prospect, you know, big guy, physical guy who you know could have a spot on an NHL team kind of down the line. But when you look at who the Bruins have and their kind of prospects pool. And what they gave up, you know, it seems like more or less a pretty fair trade. And, you know, obviously it's kind of rough getting up a first round pick, but you look at some of the younger guys they have like on this pipeline, even guys who aren't even up, you know, in Providence or in the NHL. I mean, you look at the kind of the hits they had last year, people were pretty excited about Urho Vakanin and that Finnish defenseman who's doing well in the Finnish league. Jack Sidnika, who's uh, ripping up in the OHL now. These are guys who they're pretty high on, who have been pretty impressive in their first year kind of under team control. So it's going to be interesting to see how some of these guys kind of fit in and move up the pipeline. So when you have so many young guys kind of fitting that line and towing that line, I think you can get away with you know, trading a first-round pick when the situation's right. And, I mean, giving you know, what the Bruins are, might be able to do this season, it seems like it's a pretty good you know, cost-effective deal.